Hey nerds, we are talking about The Wheel of Time, episode 207, Das Damar. We are going to review the episode and then break it down, starting now. Welcome to the Nerd Social, I'm Nathan. And I'm Paula. Hey, so we are a bit behind. We are doing a review of 207 now. We'll do a review of 208 in a bit. So the spoiler-free logline for this episode is a familiar face foils Rain and Rand's plans. So, Paula, what did you think of 207, the penultimate episode? I thought it was good. Of course, more unfolded with Egwene. For some reason, that's that's been my favorite scene, my favorite moment, just to see how that would evolve. So that was great to see. I like that we saw a little bit more into certain yeah and just them going back into the past to explain more things so no it was good yeah they're yeah i think at the end of the last episode we got shushan moraine's lover friend whatever so seeing a little bit more of her in this episode was good yeah the stuff that the stuff with Egwene probably is probably the best storyline of the season while we're recording this we've seen the last episode so know where it's gonna go but yeah it's i think it's the best even at this point at, at 207 it was the best episode of the season i uh, sorry the best storyline of the season yeah so i like where they what they did with Egwene in this episode but also the stuff of rand ran in the continuing stuff of land fear as well was was really good in this episode so yeah it was a good episode it was good it was a good wrap up to the to the final episode so how would you rate this one i would give it an eight an eight yeah i think it was fun i'll probably give it a seven a dinner party i really did i did like the backstory stuff that you're talking about which we'll get to when we break it down in a bit yeah i mean it wasn't it's i don't know how what i would have rated it if i hadn't seen the last episode because I've seen the I've seen the last last episode like it's I said like, earlier <laughs> but I still liked it quite a bit there was a actually you know what there was a bit of a twist there was a bit of a twist in this episode which we'll get to that I didn't see coming I didn't it, it wasn't a completely one like one percent shock but it was a little bit of a disappointment not a disappointment in the story a disappointing in, disappointment in one of the characters but yeah it was an enjoyable episode I think I'll still leave it at a seven but it's a, a, almost an eight for me so yeah we're talking very vaguely about the backstory thing and also the the betrayal thing so I think we should start we should break it down any other thoughts before we, we get into it no nope, let's do it all right so if you're enjoying the conversation please like share and subscribe if you can only do one please like the other uh, video it helps other people find it all right without spoilers ahead all right so the backstory thing that we were talking about was of course with moraine and shushan as young i guess it's supposed to be like them as young girls they were like talking about leaving the tower and living together by the river like shuan did when she was a girl and then their mentor they come upon their mentor and she has this vision of Rand being born we saw, we saw scenes from last season when his mother was fighting all those people while, as she was dying and then that that changed the trajectory of their lives so they she became the amulet seed and moraine spent the last 20 years looking for the dragon reborn so it was it, that that backstory was really interesting because it was this is how this these scenes bookend the episode because we i don't know if they're they can recover from this from i don't know if maybe moraine moraine feels like it's a betrayal but i don't know as the amulet seat has to do her duty as well so i, I don't think anyone is doing the wrong thing here but they it's regrettable that it, it's probably destroyed destroyed their relationship or injured their relationship so yeah i don't think i think this is it because just by looking at how Moraine was, was but... it's almost right it's almost as if they had made a promise to each other that they would not she could... Shushin would not force her to do something that she didn't want to right. do uh, my... and she broke that yeah my understanding is that like Moran couldn't compel her if she wanted to. The, the only reason that Suzanne can do it is because she's the Amulet Seat and she swore an oath to the Amulet Seat. So the I think no one else except for except for her can compel people because we earlier in the season we were talking about Leandrin doing a compulsion spell and they were saying that's like against the oaths, right? So I think only I think only the Amulet Seat has the power to do that. No, none of the other. Aes Sedai have that power. So yeah, it's, I don't know, like, I do that. It seemed like a bit of betrayal of their relationship, but like Moraine also felt bad, like leaving her on the floor. I don't know, we're getting ahead of ourselves, yeah. but like. I think they all have the power to do it. It's just against the law, right? That's what kind of keeps them. My, my understanding is that they don't have the power to do it. Like that, like they're bounded by the one power to like not lie and not attack each other. The only reason that Leandrin can do it is because she 
has a deal with the Dark One. Like the, yeah. if you remember from the first season, the rain, the way that Moraine was explaining it to the kids when they left the Two Rivers is that she couldn't lie if she wanted to because she was bound by the, the One Power. One, to speak no word that is not true. Two, to make no weapon with which one person may kill another. Three, never to use the One Power as a weapon, except in the last extreme defense of her life, or the life of her warder, or another Aes Sedai. These oaths are bound by the One Power itself. It's not that we do not break them, it's that we cannot break them. Ways that they always found, they find a way of getting around the lying thing all the time, but just choosing their words correctly. Right. Correctly, so yeah. Even in this episode, the people that are allied with Moraine just they, they don't lie outright, but they they do deceive by just saying the right thing and letting up their conclusions that they want to come to. So yeah, this is a conversation between the two of them that they she is basically saying that I, I put this burden has been just on you, and now I want to share it with you. This conversation between Lan and and Iran is also interesting. They, I guess he gives her some instructions on how to comport himself when he's in front of the Amlin Seed. And also he gives him one last sword lesson as well, which we'll see if that comes in handy in the next, in the next episode or in this episode. Yeah, they have this chat and he, I think, oh yeah, before, before we, the end of this chat, we get this cut, we see that Matt is kidnapped and brought into, brought to Fong yeah. by Ladfear. And that's the last we see of Ladfear and Fong. This is, she, this is her working with Ishmael to try to break Matt. Yeah. And we have Nynaeve and Lane here still looking for Egwene. And then we actually see Egwene here. So yeah, Egwene, like you said, this is the, probably the best storyline of the season. Maybe at the expense of some other storylines, which we can get to when we get when we, talk, we break down the last episode. But yeah, I really liked Elaine's, Egwene's rather, storyline in her development here. So we have some more of uh, Moraine's allies here. Just, they're very restless about why they called them here. They're also like they know Landfear is out so yeah oh and this is I think this is the last time we see we see Land Landrine in this episode as well this was another very surprising development we don't get to what, what why she's there until a little bit later until no actually no she does maybe she does say it in that conversation yeah she does in that conversation she asked him to kill his aunt which is like I said like I think last week or, or the week before I was saying he seems like a nice guy hopefully he's not a bad guy but I guess he's a bad guy unfortunately yeah that's when it's revealed that it's he's been a dark he's a dark yeah yeah and he's dark friend dark. and that's how he's been able to be the rise and give yeah the to the queen princess to, yeah. for him to yeah. be the future king yes yeah. that was given to him yeah. by the dark one yeah yeah and this is a very tense conversation where she feels betrayed that she went to evelyn and this is also he, he's trying to ferret information out from her asking whether or not she ever thought of killing herself and based on this conversation conversation this is i think this is how he gets the idea that she hasn't really been gentle she hasn't her, her power hasn't been removed yeah and this is what suan is basically telling him that the amulet seed is supposed to cage him and keep him and keep him as a weapon basically he's not supposed to have any freedom that's what the amulet seed is supposed to do so that's i think that's what she's deciding to do with him yeah this is where we see a Gwen's power compared to everyone else's here so this this soldan what's her name her she's that because we see her later on in the episode uh, what is her name is Sita Sita is that Sita? yeah I think Sita, it's Sita yes. yeah yeah yep. she has she has an unfortunate encounter with Elaine in later on in the episode so we see her uh Dame actually blast all the way out to the women and they're really impressed by that and then Egwene lets loose and basically knocks them all down on, on their butts which is an interesting place to, to see Egwene like develop her power because at the beginning of the season Elaine was like like chiding her for whining and being jealous of Nynaeve. So seeing how the adversity has made her stronger is interesting with Egwene. Yeah, and also she was also having a really hard time just like during training. Yeah, yeah. So they run into Lyle, they, and they give he gives them some information about where Egwene is and they try to put together a, a plan. Yeah, and this is just Ishmael trying to tempt Matt with knowledge of his past lives. And... 
here's Avienda and Perrin. I forget what the other women's names are. The Their other Aiel, apparently her friend here, died protecting her. So they have this ritual where they basically have to beat her senseless to atone for her debt, which is interesting. So Matt drinks the, the tea. He goes to his past lives. It's interesting what he's seeing. He's seeing himself hang himself. He's seeing himself be a murderer, a beater. So like, this is a very effective way of making him feel like he has no other choice and he has no other path. But it's also, it's hard to tell because it's Ishmael, right? It's, it, is he really showing him all his lives? So. Right, yeah. I was really confused by that scene because I just felt, okay, what did he see? What? He saw previous lives and he saw previous lives where he was drunk. He was a drunkard. He saw previous lives where he was hanging. He hung himself. He saw previous lives where he like, was a murderer. So I, I think Ishmael's point was to show him all of the terrible things he's done in previous lives. Ishmael also, we find out in this episode that is really tired of life. He's tired of the wheel. He's tired of being born and then reborn and born and reborn. But he's trying to convince Matt that he should end things too. That's why he should partner with the Dark One because the Dark One wants to break the wheel, right? So, yeah. So this is, I think it's just as her informing her that she's going to, she's going to take Matt and they're shielding him here in the tower. Or she was, she was told to shield him here in the tower. Well, here's the, yeah, here's the conversation where he dismisses his mother and she tells him to kill his aunt. And if the mother gets in the way, kill her too. And her mother, his mother hear, listens to that or hears that. Tempting, tempting Matt here. And then we have this conversation with Rand and Landfear, him basically just asking her for help. And she sets the Tyrene on fire to help him, which, which provides a bit of a distraction for what's going to happen later on. As I said, the conversation that Land has with this guy, is how he finds out that Moraine isn't a gentle. She is. She has weaves bounding her power. And then we, yeah, I think this is this is them going towards Forum. Uh -huh. Yeah, and this is also where they use the thing to to get Sita or put Sita in 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 the. They knock out Sita here and they put the the thing on her neck. One of the Soldan. This conversation is like oh, oh, oh. she keeps saying that she's gonna kill her. Like I I, I think like Rena really thinks that she's bonding with her. It's like you showed your power. You showed how powerful you were today and everything and then she's wiping off her ha her hand very carefully and everything and then she says i'm going to kill you just so you remember i'm going to kill you so yeah yeah she's not, not she is not softened at all so, so it's it's funny yeah and then he gets trapped by his mother his mother it's interesting the congress that this entire season how like annoyed she has been with her sister her older sister she loves her and she loves her and she respects her. I don't think that she necessarily loves her more than she loves her son, but she respects, as she says here, that everything that he's saying is true. Like she, she'll probably leave and never remember or look back on the town. But what she respects about her older sister is that she's always doing, she's always, no matter the sacrifice, is going to do the right thing. And that's what she's doing here. She loves her son, yeah. but he's a dark he's a friend. Dark fr and, and he was willing to kill his mother. He was willing to, I don't know if he was willing to kill his mother. I think I think he would have if he pushed Ken to shove, but he was willing to kill his aunt. So so yeah. And he, he, even if that wasn't the case, him being the king of the realm wasn't going to work out well for anyone if he's the dark friend. So yeah, this is where I was talking about. Well, this is an example of what I was talking about here. Uh, I think her name is Varen or Marin. I forget what her name. Her, the the her friend here. She comes in here and she basically says, "I can help hold him. You should help with the defenses." I don't think that. What's her name? Mira. No, I think she said is necessarily a lie but again it's it's meant to deceive because she's she I, I don't think that she says that Shusan says that that you should move you leave your post but the implication of what she says when she comes in here and says it says it the way that she does say it makes her think that she's supposed to leave her post and go and help so it's that again they can't lie but they can twist the truth so yeah they can just word it in a way where that is yeah Amb saying, ambiguity it, yeah yeah interpretation to what what's been said so they are gonna escape here through the ways and Suan is here with yeah she's shocked that she's up there and she goes after the she goes after them and this is where ran takes the takes the leaves off so that she unlocks her power and then they are confronted by land fear here well actually they're, they're confronted by uh, first who shields him and then land fear comes and then she tries to go against her and land just throws her to the side almost kills 
killing her. And this is what I was talking about by the end of the end of the episode where they go off of Lanfear and she's on the floor and they're flashbacks to them as girls. Yeah, I don't know how repairable the relationship here is. She looks back at her and I think the last scene, the last image is her on the ground watching her leave with Lanfear through the ways. So I, I think that they both feel betrayed here. So yeah, it's a, uh, it, it was a, uh, it was interesting end to the episode. We didn't get to see her much this season. She was definitely a much a bigger part last season. We got to see like flashback of her on the river with her father and everything, but she's only, she was only in this episode and the last episode. So I don't know where that's going to go, but yeah, interesting. It's safe to say that their relationship is broken. Yeah, who, who knows and... whether or not it can be repair, repaired. Maybe that's why they showed us the, the flashback to show us where they started and the unfortunate, the unfortunate fact that they they can never get that back again. But yeah, I, well, I guess we will see. Looking forward to breaking down the next episode. All right. Well, we want to hear what you guys think about this episode. Please like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you in the next one very shortly, actually. All right, guys. Bye.